Makers Challenge. Places, please. Places, please. Places, please. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to day two. How was last night's homework? Did you learn anything about yourself after yesterday? Um, I was really motivated yesterday. I think the thing that like touched me most was just thinking about um, this time as the Renaissance. I'm like, please, please let us be heading into the Renaissance. Um, we are thrilled to announce the winner of our day one giveaway, two tickets to the off-Broadway play, the play that goes wrong. Congratulations to, drum roll, blah, 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 blah. Nicole Trulio! <laughs> Nicole, you will get an email from the TMS team with further instructions. Don't forget, if you complete all the homework this week, you will be entered into the grand prize, which is an iPad. Okay, so let's get started with our first guest speaker today. T. Oliver Reed has spent the past two decades working on Broadway, currently in Hades Town, formerly in Once on this Island, Sunset Boulevard, After Midnight, Sister Act, and more. He is on the faculty at NYU Tisch grad acting program and Columbia University School of the Arts. So fancy. He's also the co-founder of Black Theater Coalition. Welcome, T. Thank you, Carrie. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing well. How is it that we have never worked together after all, this, all, all this time? I know. I was thinking that as I've seen you on stage a whole bunch of times because I love the shows that you've done in your work. Thank you. And so, I you likewise. Oh, thanks. Yes. Uh, yeah, and I have to, well, let me do a shout out to Ryder University because I'm also on faculty at Ryder, so go Bronx. I, I'm nonstop busy, Carrie. I don't know what's going on in my life. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, so so I'm, I'm happy to be here. Congratulations to uh, the winner of those tickets. Uh, today, my tip is just about how you, how we want to proceed in our, in our lives and our, this is our, you know, in our, artistic lives as well as just being human beings. And for me, it is leading with grace and offering grace to others if we expect the same in return, uh, especially after this last year and for all of us figuring out how we want to proceed with our lives, uh, leading, leaving the pandemic, hopefully better people than we entered it. Uh, it's all about how we're going to respond to situations in the future and, and for us to know that if we want a better outcome, then maybe we have to take a better approach to to understanding people and not dealing with people, but truly understanding uh, the circumstances in which they enter a room. Um, this past year has shown us a lot. Uh, it's shown us a lot with theater in general and how we approach equity, inclusion, diversity, and belonging, and and how we how we want to the kind of artists that we want to be the humans that we want to be, uh, the shows that we want to tell, the stories we want to see on stage, and all of that for me uh, goes back to being clear on on the human being that I am or that I, I espouse to be and I want to be um, and the direction that I'm leading. Uh, I happen to have the joy of being in a show with with the greatest of all times, Mr. Andre De Shields, and one of the things he says that I hold with me all the time now is the universe is conspiring with you so to know that with everything you're doing, and it may be a week later or it may be 10 years later, that but that once information and a desire is put into the universe, the universe will conspire with you to, to lead you in that direction. And that direction always includes offering grace to those who are around. Um, daily, you have those moments when you, you want to scream out at someone or you want to fall back into the the ways that we have always gone through the world and, and the, the chips that are on shoulders and the, the tough layer of skin that we have. But to remember each time that when you, you approach someone or someone approaches you, it's like, am I responding with grace? Am I leading with grace? Am I offering the person that I'm in conversation with the opportunity to be a better person or to be their, their truest selves because I am, I am, opening up to them and leaving the floor and leaving the opportunity in a, in a place that allows them to tell me how they're truly feeling, to really share themselves in a way. And it's the thing with, with theater, we expect 
that those on stage and creating to to be that open when we put so many roadblocks in front of them. What happens if we don't put those roadblocks? What happens if we if we truly say, I am open to who you are and what you bring to the table and let's make something, let's create something. So for me, that truly is about that moment of of, of stepping back and out and sometimes out of out of ourselves and out of the norm, out of what we how we would normally respond to something and allowing people the opportunity to truly be themselves. So um, that's a tip. It was a lot less than 15 minutes, but it's, it's, I, I'm all for short and sweet carry these days. It's like, um, ha, you know, it's, it's great to, to be able to wax, you know, poetically all the time, but that sometimes is me. I, I leave that to, to the greats like, um, like Mr. DeShields uh, for me. It's like, let's get in quick and quick and, and, and get back out. It's like my favorite, my favorite scriptures. Uh, if you are a religious person, are the ones that are short. It's like keep your mouth shut and don't bother and don't bother people. That's the one I love. So this for me is like if you if you want grace from others, you have to show grace to them as well. How do you feel about that, Carrie Butler? Oh my gosh, I loved it. I was like almost crying just because we've been through such a um, you know a difficult time where yeah. you do feel yourself wanting to scream at people. <laughs> And I'm wearing a bracelet. Time. I'm wearing a bracelet that says "Peace and Breathe," just to remind myself because I really want to be a peacemaker. Yes. And it starts but, and with, yes, with the people around us, like yes. And it's 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 that thing. It's like you know, forced to say not only do I want to be a peacemaker, but I'm going to actively make choices in order to do that. And that is the thing. It's like I I would come across so many people in the past weeks, especially as theaters start to open, and we all want something new and a new way of creating, but many of us have come in with the same constructs that we had before. It's like, well, if you want that new thing, then what are you going to change about the old you in order to make sure that the new thing is possible? And that's the peace and the breathing and offering grace to people when when normally we would have we would have screamed or stomped out of a room or slammed a door because it makes for good theater, uh, to now say let's not do that. Let's let's see what the conversation can be with this person, that that leads us down that road that we say we want to go on. Yeah, really, really great. <clears throat> I think I'm already a member because you can join the the Black Theater Coalition, right? Everyone can. Yes. Everyone I think can. I'm already um, a member, but if I'm not, I'm definitely going to <laughs> join again. <laughs> And I, I will be reaching out to you personally to say, oh, Carrie, good. we need oh, your help good. on something. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. I would love to. Yeah. But yeah, and that's that's been one of the things for me, you know, over these past these past months with with uh, Black Theater Coalition is to to for us to remove that illusion of inclusion. Whereas, you know, it looks you see certain shows, it looks like there is EDI all over the place in the theater, but you look behind the scenes, backstage, and the in the offices and the industry partners that make Broadway happen night after night. And there are so few people of color who are in those offices. So it truly is about making sure there are opportunities for more producers and general managers and company managers and directors and musical directors and all these things so that, so that the world of theater looks like the world around us. And when, when young people walk into, into these Broadway houses or into these performing arts centers in their hometowns, they see people who look like them and they realize that there's an opportunity for them to be a part of the arts, even if they don't sing, act, or dance. A hundred percent. Like, you know, with all this, I've been going through my career and I've done, you know, I've been doing this for like 30 years or something. I, and I've done like, I don't know, maybe 12 Broadway shows and additional shows on that. Yeah. Never, ever had a person of color as my director. Yeah. For, for Broadway, never. And, it's, and that's the thing. It's 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 the thing that we want to begin to fix. And like you know, we can we can look at where we have been and 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 throw blame on people. But I we prefer and I prefer. It's like mm. this is where we this is where we are right now. So let's move on for hit from here. Oh, and, and a lot of and a lot of what we're saying to you know to our our colleagues and our peers and and those directors who are who are working all the time is to let's 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 say that we aren't going to work with or hire homogenous creative teams anymore so that those teams start to look like the world. So not only are there, are there people of color on these creative teams, but there are more women and more non-binary uh, people on these teams as well. So that the story, it just opens up the possibilities of the stories that we're going to tell. Because yeah. right now we, we tell this, we have a tendency to, to tell similar stories because we have similar directors. If we open up those doors so that 
these that so that there's a non-binary director telling this story, even if it's not a story about a non-binary person. Even we have a a black choreographer who's working on a show that's not about the black experience, but it's about a human experience. Mm -hmm. That's what we want to see. I love it. Yeah. I love your message. Thank you so much for being with us. My pleasure. Thank you. Um, and don't forget, our speakers will be jumping into the VIP Zoom room to answer your additional questions. And if you don't have a VIP ticket, no problem. You can still buy a VIP ticket by clicking the link in the comments. Uh, also, if you missed any of today or yesterday, all live streams will be available to watch on replay in the Facebook group. So you just have to search live stream in the search bar to find them all. Okay, let's bring on our next speaker. Brett Shuford has been on the Broadway stage in Wicked and The Little Mermaid, but he has now turned the corner to launch the Broadway Life Coach, a space where he helps creatives step into their spotlight. Welcome to the stage, Brett Shuford. Yay, Carrie Butler. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Welcome. I'm such a fan, but my husband is like a devoted fan of you. So, oh, thank you. A adores you. So he was so excited when he said, "Oh my gosh, she's well, she's hosting you." I was like, "Yeah." Tell him I said hello. Send I'm, my love. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I need to get your tips today on the coaching. <laughs> yeah, I'm super excited to to be here, and I could have listened to to T and Carrie talk for hours. Um, but today, I. I'm very much a practical person. I love to give people practical tools. And with 15 minutes, I was like, how do I get practical tools in place for uh, for everybody in these 15 minutes? And to me, I feel one of the biggest shifts that's happened for a lot of us in theater over the last year and a half, two years, um, is a lot of theater people who maybe poo-pooed social media or building an online presence in any way kind of realize the importance of it when everything shut down. Because if we didn't have an online presence, how are we going to get our message out there? How are we going to get our, our work out into the world? And to me, as a as an as a performer, as a coach, I it's my mission to help as many artists be visible out there. And uh, because our message can heal the world. Uh, but being a peacemaker is what we can do as artists. And I believe that what we do is an act of service. We can uh, serve people, make them see the world differently, see themselves differently, feel something different. And so my mission is to help people really have the courage to step into their spotlight. And today I want to just talk about how you can just three things you can do right now to help you align your online presence with who you are as a person. Because as T was just sort of mentioning, one of the most toxic or dangerous businesses that can exist is one that says it's one thing in public, but then is another thing behind closed doors. And it's so important in order to be seen as somebody authentic or as an authentic artist that what we see is exactly what you get right? You want your social presence, your online presence to match the person that's in the room. And that can be, uh, a lot of people can have resistance to that. It can feel vulnerable. So I'm hoping today I can help you unlock some of those things. I sort of look at marketing, uh, social media, sort of like you as an artist are throwing a party, right? Whatever you're creating, whatever you do, whatever your interests are, are this awesome party that that you are just inviting people to every time you make a post every time you audition every time you have a networking meeting it's just an invitation and your opportunity in all of those things is to just extend your creativity out into the world i sort of think of it like social media is this opportunity to um to go, go gadget. If you're a member of inspector gadget go go gadget arms take your creativity and extend it out into the world. But for some people, we can get stuck because we think we have to promote, we have to sell. And what I want to challenge you today is that if it feels like promoting, you're forgetting why you do it. All we have to do is invite people, invite people to the party because you are 
as an entity, as a human being, are a party. You're awesome. But not everybody's going to always want to go to your party. Our job is not to be liked. Our job is to become known. So allowing people to know and then giving them the human, the thing that makes them human, which is the opportunity to decide whether or not that's the party they'd want to go to and allowing them to, to, and allowing yourself to really be cool with that. So it really starts with number one, just knowing who your audience is. So I think, you know, what I have a lot of clients do when we start working on their social presence is nail your ideal audience, create your ideal audience. So a lot of us are trying to make things for too many people, right? We're in, and a confused mind says no, right? If you're trying to please everybody, you please nobody. So I have people really create a fictional person, like almost do a character analysis of who their ideal audience is. And everything you do is serving that person. Every day, that person needs to hear from hear something from you. You can help them, either help them laugh, help them cry, help them uh, learn something, feel something. And every day that you don't post or make something, that person is not getting the message that they need. And so just know, like, you have an opportunity every day with social media. It doesn't cost anything for you to reach out and serve somebody on a daily basis, right? So that's number one, create an ideal audience. Number two, I think it's super important that we be consistent. And in order to be consistent, you got, it's not even so much about consistency in the amount of content you create, but it's the type of content and what it is that your message is. So I like to tell people to, um, to number two, really create what I call, I call them the BS4. I call it the BS4 because when we can, when we start to like be strategic about our social media content, it can feel a little bit like BS, but also BS is my initials. So with the BS4, really what we want to do is think of four things. And one of them should be what you do as an artist. But then also three things that you could literally talk about for days. Like for me, I could talk about Disney for days. I'm a Disney nerd. Uh, I could talk about coffee. I'm a total coffee nerd. I could talk about per personal development, right? And then, of course, theater, acting, arts. Um, I'm so passionate about that. And with those pillars, you can start to build consistency in your message and you become known as this person, right? People get to know you and it can feel vulnerable. You might think, well, who am I to share, you know, my nerddom of coffee or of Disney? Who are you not to, right? That's what, you know, what I talk about is this idea that you have to bridge your credibility with your vulnerability. The people who really grow a following and, and have built a presence are the people who can, or even artists that we know, are the people who perfectly bridge that credibility and vulnerability. Think of Oprah, right? We know about her childhood and growing up in Alabama and uh, and the sexual assault she had, right? Or, or And yet we also know she's this amazing journalist, right? And it's her who she is plus what she does that together perfectly balanced that helps us understand who she is. Cause there's a lot of great journalists, right? But they're not her. And so there's a lot of great artists, writers, actors, singers, but they're not you. So let people know who you are by sharing some of those things. And if you use these pillars, it becomes a little bit easier to show up consistently and not get so overwhelmed in all of the things we could share, right? And then the third thing I like, and, and just to kind of finish off the pillars idea, you know, just remember that quantity breeds quality. A lot of us can get stuck in perfectionism. I only want to make stuff that looks amazing or that I only want to share things when I have something amazing going on. But the way you do anything is the way you do everything. Showing up and doing it consistently breeds quality. It's how you grow. No one who has a social media following who has built a brand in any way started off good at it 
right? They got good at it. And so now's the best time to do that. All right. And then the third thing, since I know I'm, I could talk about this for days, um, is what I call just, just understand we can all suffer from shiny object syndrome, which is a new platform is out. Oh no, I need to learn all these social media platforms, or I need to blog, or I need to get my email list. Yes. But I like to tell people to dominate, don't dabble. Pick one to three platforms, one to three things, you know, tops, three platforms that you want to dominate, right? And focus on just being really good at that thing and know that in time you'll be able to get better at other things. But if you can dominate one platform, and you become known and people get to really build a relationship with you and community, that's how you make change, right? And build relationships and that's all marketing is, right? We're just building relationships with people. So um, hopefully these three tips can help you get started if you haven't. If you wanna go further, I have a free download. It's a roadmap. I call it the imposter to influencer map. And if you go to imposter to influencer map.com, you can download it for free and it'll help give you a whole bunch of other tips and tools to help you build your online social presence. If that's, uh, if you're in the ballpark of doing that, um, now's the best time to do it because I'm telling you, building your presence, building a a personal brand or or letting people know who you are is what's going to help you stand out, especially in today's world post pandemic. So check out imposter to influencer map.com. And I hope to see some of you in the VIP room. And uh, thanks. I hope this was helpful. Hi, Brett. That was really helpful. I hope totally took a lot of notes. Oh, good. <laughs> um, and I'm also a huge Disney fan. Oh, uh, you don't think I know that? I can like, pick in my dream to go to Disney World with you and your family. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I would love it. Um, I I also was like, okay, I kind of do the four things because I love Disney, I love gardening, I love painting, and I love theater. And like I talk about those, but so there is is there like true that there's like an algorithm thing? Is that why you have to post a lot? Well, there is an algorithm, right? The whole all, every platform has its own algorithm, but you don't have to post a lot. I always tell people just post what you can do, but do it consistently. Like if you commit to something, mm -hmm. right? Because then your audience, it's more about your audience. I always say to people, if it depends on what your goal is too. If you really want to grow, then you have to post more, right? Mm -hmm. If you want to get a bunch of followers, but for some people, it's just about engaging the people that they do have. And if you want to nurture those people, then just commit to something and give them that thing that they trust you with, right? So I know for you, I know it's because your Disney album is so good. By the way, if you haven't listened to Carrie's Disney album, oh! it's so good. <laughs> Thank um, you. this cause I know helped you with that. And yes, so him. good. Oh my gosh. Um, love him. And so, um, you know, that's what people, people know you for that. They know you're for your theater. They know you're for your beautiful family. So, you know, people want to, people want to see those things over and over again, because it's familiar. It makes them feel seen. It makes them feel acknowledged. And so, and that's the opportunity we have with social media. You can either see it as like this burden, which I, I know some people do, or you can see it as this opportunity to really extend your creativity out into the world. Okay, I'm definitely gonna go to imposter to influencer map. I'm gonna do it. You're gonna love that. I actually think you're gonna love it. Oh, good. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Those were amazing tips. Oh, you're welcome. Um, so don't forget, you can go to the VIP room. Our speakers will be popping into the VIP room to answer any additional questions. Um, and you can still buy your VIP ticket, don't worry. You just go to clicking the link in the comments. Now, how many of you did your homework um, from last night? Well, you have more homework today. Your homework for today is to reach out to three people in your professional life and pay them a compliment. And the goal is to be authentic and genuine in your message. Your homework will then be posted in the Facebook group and pinned to the top of the page. Those who complete the homework before 12 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow will be eligible 
for our giveaway. Day two's giveaway, 10 theater making books by theater makers like Mandy Gonzalez, Billy Porter, James Lapine, Kenny Leon, and more. So get that homework done, post it to Facebook before 12. We will see you tomorrow at 12 p.m. Eastern for day three. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for supporting theater. It's the Theater Makers Challenge. Places, please. Places, please. Places, please.